Welcome to the Media Capital Show. I'm your host, Diana Floresco. Join me and some of the greatest media capital investors and startup founders as we dive into what happens in the media for equity space, why it matters now, and how you can keep up. Media Capital is a media for growth production, a media for equity advisory firm, and global network of investors specialized in media capital fundraising. Make sure you subscribe to the Media for Growth newsletter to get all the insights from our latest episodes. Thank you for listening. I think there's a real opportunity for the, the media equity space at the moment because I think you know, even before the current market conditions, I think there's always been probably a lack of you know, specialist consumer funds in, in this space and specifically ones that really understand what it takes to successfully drive brand building and, and kind of con- consumer marketing. So, you know, that coupled with now kind of the lack of um, investment, you know, venture investment in the market for consumer businesses, I'd say that that's a real opportunity for, for media for equity players to, to really kind of come in and, and fill that funding gap. Congrats on announcing ITV Adventures Latency Investment. I saw the news yesterday about Resty. Yes, yeah, we announced, uh, yeah, just yesterday. So ho- hopefully very topical. Um, so our, our first deal of, of the year into an awesome company, a uh, company called Resi, as you say, they are... They're a kind of a leading architectural tech platform um, founded by two awesome founders, Alex and Jules. Um, and it's essentially a kind of online kind of marketplace model for helping kind of homeowners and, and kind of anyone interested in doing a home renovation to navigate the full kind of end-to-end kind of elements of, of, of doing a, a project in your home. So everything from finding an architect through to going through the, the planning permission kind of approval process, they've got kind of a, a market leading 96% approval rate in the market which is fantastic through to you know finding a, a builder contractor structural engineer and also help with financing the project so pretty much everything you need to to kind of do a home renovation like a one-stop shop i mean i'm in the process of getting my mortgage so i would definitely check them out oh yeah definitely, definitely check them out and yeah but if anyone's listening looking to do up their homes then yeah do do check them out awesome so look i mean i really wanted to have you on the show because i think your background is impressive and how you got into the industry it's something that a lot of people should hear and that's actually the thing that I wanted to start it with today. Tell us a bit more about how you actually made your way in the media capital industry and what actually drove you into the media space in the first place. Yeah, sure. So, so my background is both kind of venture capital, kind of investing and, and also media. So I've I've worked at Summit Partners, which is a, an American growth equity uh, investment firm. So I've worked in both their, their VC and, and private equity teams. And, and then I was also at Virgin Media for, for a number of years and did kind of a variety of roles there. So uh, specifically within their, their TV division, um, but everything from strategy to commercial to business development. Um, got to work in some really, really cool fun things like launching their partnership with Netflix and yeah, just various kind of really, really interesting things. So um, so yeah, so for me, the kind of media for equity kind of model was what I kind of thought was was a perfect perfect role for me, given it kind of just blends my my media and, and investment experience. Um, so in 2018, I I got approached about an opportunity at UK TV, which is the the channel's business now owned by by BBC Studios, um, but back then they were looking to launch their own kind of media for equity fund in in the space. And yeah, as I say, I thought it was just the ideal role, given it. it kind of married up my my investment and media experience um also it was you know the chance to, to start something you know relatively new and, and fairly entrepreneurial albeit with all the uh, the lack of risk that comes with having a big corporate <laughs> backing you um and you know I've started businesses of my own in the past so that element of it really really appealed to me um and so yeah kind of leapt at that opportunity so join join UK TV in, in 2018 um and then ran their fund for for four years um, and then last year, actually, I, I got a call from from ITV um, saying that, you know, they they recently launched uh, their own media equity fund and they were looking for someone to, to come in and, and really kind of grow and, and scale it into essentially becoming the, the largest media equity fund in the UK. And um, and so, yeah, I, I gave it considerable thought. I I'd actually just had a baby as well. So I was like, it's going to be a, a lot to change jobs and, and have a baby in the same year but I thought why not um yeah fundamentally I think there's if I'm going to run a media for equity fund then there's probably no better place to do that than ITV um and I just I was really impressed by just the scale of ambition and kind of yeah just the the, the importance with which the the model was was being held to within the within the company and um and also I think from a proposition perspective you know ITV is the largest commercial broadcaster in in the UK and and has really 
compelling proposition across not just linear, but also kind of regional linear advertising um, through ITVX with kind of, you know, dress for BVOD. And so I thought actually, yeah, there's just all the fundamentals in place. And, and with my background, I felt I could really kind of come in and, and make a difference. And, and so, yeah, that's that's kind of my journey and, and where I am today in a nutshell. I mean, you're, uh, I, first of all, I love that mentality of why not? Why not, you know, starting a family and starting a new job? With, as you said, one of the largest, I think the second largest broadcaster in the UK. Um, but also one of the things that the way you explain it, I mean, you're very humble because um, one of the things that maybe this, some of the listeners might not know is is a relatively new space. And when you set up UK, UKTN in, uh, sorry, UKTV in um, 2018, if I'm not mistaken, maybe there were one or two more other funds in the UK at the time doing media for equity deals. So you, you relatively, it's a, it was a new model. Um, and you, asked, you also started with ITV recently. What do you, I mean, where do you even start? What do you know now that you wish you had known when you started that first fund? Because, it, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't easy. It, it's, a, it's a model that it differs so much from country to country. And even setting up the legal structure and how you're going to do the deals, even if it's backed by, you know, a company, a corporate, and you've got the resources, it's not easy. So what, yes. what, were, your, <laughs> what were your learnings, basically, from that journey? Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right, Dan. It's, um, it was back then in 2018, and, and to, to an extent still is now a, a fairly nascent investment model, which... I think fundamentally just lacks the the same level of awareness and, and understanding as you know the traditional kind of venture space and it, you know media for equity. I, I think we've come a long way, but we still aren't necessarily the you know the number one choice for every founder in you know every consumer founder in the UK. Partly because they aren't aware of the model um, and the players in the space, or you know it's still I'd say a very kind of marmite thing in terms of founders either love it or hate it and then they they you know most of them are probably digitally native uh, startups who have really built their business on performance marketing and they fully understand kind of how that works and it's you know super measurable and attributable and um and that's been kind of the the lifeline of growth but tv specifically is this somewhat opaque and kind of black box type kind of advertising medium that they just don't don't really understand so I think yes I think the industry has come along a long way but still a lot to be done and I think you know a lot of the work you do and and events like this you know very helpful in terms of just raising awareness and and driving understanding of of the model and and specifically the benefits that can be had for for founders and, and consumer businesses but yes yeah lot lots of learnings I think crucially when I was setting up the fund and and even kind of now a lot of I guess one piece, yeah, one piece of advice I would give is just spending enough time kind of getting the internal elements right before you go and you you launch externally. Um, and that's everything from really having a strong understanding and and crucially alignment, I would say, across all all the relevant internal stakeholders, right up to kind of you know board level, um, as to kind of what is the fundamental purpose behind the fund, kind of what why why is the specific media owner kind of launching the fund and um you know and directly linked to that what are the success criteria of kind of why are we doing it and and, and how are we going to measure success and, and crucially kind of what does that what does that look like how do we define that and what are the, the key criteria um and i think another really important element is also just getting all the all the kind of internal processes and kind of systems in place um you know a lot of what what i spent a lot of time doing is kind of almost educating the 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 board to think less like a traditional television broadcaster and more like an agile investor you know given you know given our our kind of peer set is the traditional VCs who are very used to moving quickly and working in a very agile way um you know if we're taking months and months and months to decide whether we want to do an investment by the time we've got conviction that deal is going to be done and you know on, on to the next so a lot of it is about making sure that you've strike the balance between putting in place the right level of you know diligence and governance and all the kind of you know internal checks that that we need to make to get comfortable doing a deal but also kind of striking that balance between being agile enough that we can win the best deals in the market and and that we aren't kind of shooting ourselves in the foot in a way by by acting in such a long way that we we can't kind of compete for the best deals so there's definitely a a balance to be struck Um, and I think when you're setting up any fund kind of focusing on that and getting the right balance and and having all of that 
agreed upfront and kind of before you even start kind of going out to companies and, and trying to win deals and, and kind of yeah, launching the fund externally. I think that's that's really important. I always like to, I think, especially when we talk about um, the kind of media backed um, model like ITV Adventures, I think in a previous episode, we talked about the independent model as well. But I think when you work inside um, ultimately a media company, I think the fund is almost like this perfect linchpin between the sales team and you've got the board, which we have to convince. And obviously you have to, you have your own remit of la- launching and scaling that fund. So your background, I suppose, was so relevant for setting up the fund as well, because you just mentioned it's so it pretty much is similar to a, a traditional VC fund. And we'll talk about that as well later today, because I think a lot more investors should probably be looking into this space and potentially partnering up with media companies for the various reasons that I'm sure we'll touch on. But in terms of the ITV adventures uh, specifically, you also mentioned that you, ha- you had to think about the success and the metrics and why are we doing this in the first place? What are we trying to achieve? I know you you, you joined last year um, and the fund launched during the pandemic. Um, there was an opportunity in terms of supporting consumer startups. Um, it's a 50 million pounds annual fund, correct? Yes. From yeah, that's right. right. I'm curious why, for in, from through your, uh, your lens, what what is success or how do you measure success or what does success mean to you with a fund and what inspired that um, creation of ITV Adventures in the first place? Yeah, sure. So I'd say that there is a really clear kind of clarity of purpose around kind of why, why the fund was launched and, and kind of what the success metrics are. Um, and the, the, the fundamental kind of main rationale behind it is is to generate the financial return um, for the business so it, it's a really important part of the wider revenue diversification story at ITV um, and that is really kind of what drives the you know every investment that we do within adventures is it's about returning a, a you know financial gain on on exit um, that's not to say that there aren't other important kind of secondary um, kind of drivers um, which are still very important um, and primarily they relate to well I guess there, there are two other main ones so the first is about you know the more deals that we do the more expertise and experience we get in really understanding kind of direct consumer um, and and specifically kind of how our media and kind of the work that we do kind of supporting kind of these types of businesses to really kind of grow their their business through through television um, is only kind of deepened with every every future deal that we do so that's a really important one around just driving kind of strategic insights around direct to consumer Um, and then the other one which is again a a really important one is a more strategic one around you know growing the overall advertising market so essentially bringing in new to tv brands who wouldn't necessarily have been able to advertise on on tv kind of at this earlier stage in in their growth journey um, proving the model um, both in terms of why ITV can be a really important scaling channel for them. Also, as a result of, you know, coming on on ITV, hopefully that, you know, assuming everything goes well, then the, the idea is that they will very much drive brand awareness, uh, generate kind of new new customer acquisition and essentially reach profitability earlier and, and essentially then become cash generative to a point where they will then hopefully be be spending cash with us um, in the long term. And so in that sense, kind of we, we're doing kind of, uh, a wider kind of strategic kind of benefit to the the overall advertising industry around kind of bringing in new to TV brands earlier and and growing the market kind of in the long term. So, so those I'd say are probably the three main drivers as to to why we're doing it, but with a very clear hierarchy placing the financial return kind of top 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 of the list. Yeah, yeah, and I think creating that market category is it's really important. I was um I was uh, looking into some research and it's absolutely extraordinary how much money a uh, startup of a relatively middle, late size stage would actually allocate towards marketing. The likes of Robinhood and um, Coursera and all the others, up to about 50% of the marketing goes into, of their spend goes into marketing spend. Um, But then if you actually look at where that spend is going, it's, um, well, historically, primarily was going to digital uh, channels and I think that's always something that you think about as a founder when you're scaling your business it's accessible everyone knows about it however when you try to make that leap forward to tv it, it's there's, there's a lot of preconceptions and misconceptions and we talked about in, in the report that we launched late last year and I feel like the industry is definitely getting better and there's a lot more founders now considering media for equity but just simply because others 
have tried it before and it, mm-hmm. it, it made the case for it. And of, of course, I mean, I agree with you. It's all about at the end of the day, um, it has to be profitable. It has to make financial returns for, for the group. Um, but this is an interesting case because um, I speak to a lot of different media companies. Um, there's a lot more actually interest from the media companies these days from outside of Europe trying to launch their own fund. But it's not easy to, I think, make the case to the board, um, which still a lot of people would prefer short term revenue. Right. So it's a change of mindset. It's a change of completely structure, I guess, when it comes to setting up your own media for equity fund inside the company. How would you make a case to a board for the first time that, for example, never done a media for equity um, deal before a fund? Um, why should they think of this long-term returns as opposed to uh, prioritizing short-term revenue? Yes, I think it's, I think, look, any, anyone looking to make that case now is probably in a much stronger position than, you know, than when, when I was having to make it, partly because there is just a, a broader proliferation of, of media-owned funds in the market and just a lot more data points to point to in terms of the, the types of exits. Um, well, I think everything from the, just the, the amount of, capital that can be deployed in these types of deals through to I think just the caliber of companies that we can get onto the cap tables of um, through to then kind of critically the you know the the, the level of um, exit and then the types of returns to be to be had um, but yes exactly you say it's it's a long-term investment horizon you know we're, we're talking kind of five to ten years in, in most cases um, but I think where where kind of that's important and, and where the value can be demonstrated is around you know the, the wide diversification story. So particularly for you know television broadcasters, you know, that it's no secret that linear linear viewing is is in kind of structural decline and and you know increasingly broadcasters are having to look at kind of you know future proofing their businesses and and diversifying their revenue. Um, so whether that's looking at you know kind of streaming and um, bringing younger kind of increasingly bringing younger uh, audiences in um, through to where I think media equity can play a really interesting role, which is kind of just opening up an entirely new um, revenue stream, um, but one which also has a say the ancillary benefit of of growing the ad market. So for for you know for companies like ITV where you know we have an important a very important kind of tizing business and that's a really important driver of our, our revenue. Uh, media focus plays a really important role in terms of that that wider diversification play, um, which which is very much a long term play given both kind of the you know the exit horizons, but also when you're building something from scratch, it inevitably will take take a bit of time to to kind of grow and scale and, and get to a level where you're where you're at critical mass and, and kind of you know utilizing the the full fifteen million of our of our allocation. Yeah, and I guess when you have when you have that kind of inventory and reach, because um, that's another I think that's a really important aspect to founders as well. I think we keep talking about um, uh, the value of the inventory or media capital in terms of dollar signs but it's really about the reach isn't it and when you have for example a channel like ITV that has that you know reaching probably more than 60 percent of the UK viewers yes you have that ability right to to strike different media for equity deals to look at a way of diversification revenue creation as you said by going in early supporting these companies that later on would grow and spend much more Um, but also you know I, I guess pushing back on a, a, a typology of the, the likes of Amazon, Facebook, Google, I guess, and, and, and making a case again for, for TV. I'm actually so curious on, the, on that note. Um, let's talk about ITV and your investment thesis, right? What, what, what do you look for in founders? What kind of you know, stage, sectors specifically? What's, how would you like to grow the fund basically in the next few years? Cool. So, yeah, we have a, a, a pretty clear focus. Um, so we look to invest into you know, mass market consumer businesses um, anywhere from Series A through to pre-IPO. Uh, we're, we're probably a little bit later stage than, than more general kind of media for funds because exactly as you say, kind of we have the largest you know, we're the largest commercial broadcaster in the UK and we have the the, the, the largest reach. Um, and it certainly makes makes my job a lot easier when you've got that kind of, um, kind of you know, credentials um, in terms of not just kind of overall reach, but also through a lot of what we're able to offer in terms of, you know, regional advertising and then kind of the addressable 
uh, opportunity through ITVX. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different kind of ways in which we can create very bespoke and, and flexible media plans. Um, and because, again, we have a family of channels which hit different you know, demographics, um, you know, pretty diverse demographics, whether it's, you know, ITV2 and, you know, Love Island and the juggernaut that that is and kind of bringing in kind of younger audiences to 1634s across a both kind of linear, but also on, on ITVX through to kind of more older, but also kind of, you know, across pretty much across kind of gender, uh, age and kind kind of socioeconomic kind of backgrounds we we can kind of hit most most key demos kind of at scale in a way that for us are very very envious of so in that sense from a sector perspective I'm in a unique position I can be very broad in, in kind of the types of verticals and, and kind of sectors that that we kind of go after but yeah fundamentally kind of businesses that have a consumer proposition um whereby it makes sense for them to, to advertise on on tv um but within that we're, we're pretty broad in how in how we source so fundamentally we look at businesses that you know very similar to what a traditional cash investor would look at so a, a strong management team um product market fit is established um there's a large addressable market to to go after um, you know, crucially, we need kind of strong unit economics and, and we want to kind of see that those are trending, trending in the right direction. Um, and then probably the, the other element that we spend a lot of time kind of diligencing and, and understanding, which I guess a traditional VC wouldn't wouldn't look to do, is what I call the, the kind of media customer fit. And that's really about us understanding and then before we invest, getting to strong conviction around the fact that as a result of our investment into this company, we are you know, very confident that we will make a genuine difference to the growth and kind of scaling kind of journey of that business. Um, so the last thing I want to do is, is make a media directory investment in a business where we we don't feel that there's a strong overlap between that target customer base and our viewing audience. Um, you know, we, we want to be having really strong case studies and, and really making a, you know, a meaningful difference in terms of kind of helping founders to, to grow and scale to new heights. So we spend a lot of time kind of working with the management team, so specifically, um, you know, founders, but but really the, the CMO and kind of their their team to understand um, kind of that element of the investment thesis. That's that's kind of key, I'd say, for every one of our deals. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I think, I mean, in the end, it, it, you know, if that specific media wouldn't work, it's detrimental to the brand. Brand, but it's detrimental back to ITV as well because it's a, it's an investment after all when you are vested in the company to make it work. Um, one of the things that I, and I know um, there are different programs within ITV and um, you know you, you work sometimes with a bit earlier stages companies just to get them ready for that first kind of big campaign or the debut on TV. Um, um, what else does it actually go in 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 that? kind of relationship I guess or because it's not just a transaction it's not just you know providing media inventory but I think you you work with them so much more in terms of advice and creative yeah. and so on yeah so we we very much see it as kind of a, a multifaceted partnership and, and a long-term one um so beyond obviously just the, the media that we that we invest we pretty much look to help across the full kind of end-to-end element of launching you know a tv campaign for the first time or or, or not necessarily first time, but launching a TV campaign. So uh, I have a, a dedicated media planning team, um, an amazing team that uh, work, as I say, very closely with with each startup to really kind of build them a, you know, a bespoke, flexible plan um, that's going to kind of, you know, hopefully work as, as hard as possible for them. Um, so everything from kind of the, the planning stage through to obviously kind of booking the campaign and, and kind of getting everything live through to then also kind of optimizing the, kind of the campaign once it's live kind of on our channels um so that's a really important part of what drives drive success um and then we also have a, a kind of a measurement and innovation team um so that's really around you know making sure that we're attributing the the tv correctly um but also kind of you know that 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 data is key to then allowing the media planning team to be able to to optimize the the media but also we see it as a more holistic um kind of value add which is really around broader kind of brand consultancy kind of looking at TV as part of the, the wider marketing mix um, and also kind of, you know, consultancy around how kind of your your other channels, you know, TV has a really, 
as I'm sure you know, kind of has a, a fantastic amplification benefit across all other kind of marketing channels. And, and we really like to invest in companies where TV is part of a, a, an omni-channel approach. Um, and so that team kind of will play an important role around kind of advising how to kind of make TV work as hard as possible, but in the context of all, all the other kind of channels that you're you're investing in from a, a marketing perspective. Um, and then kind of the, the other element is around the creative. Um, so again, uh, have an in-house um, kind of creative team that can very much help um, startups with you know with creating their 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 TV ad. Um, it's you know there's no obligation to to use them by any means. So you know we're, we're equally happy if if a company goes and appoints an external agency. And again, we have a nice kind of rolodex of of agencies we can introduce companies to that we think are you know a lot more kind of agile and kind of startup friendly. So that's that's definitely kind of part of the, the service that we offer. Um, but there is also obviously a, an in-house team that we make available um, should the companies kind of want to use them. Uh, where have you seen TV actually work the best in terms of, um, you know, the amplifier effect that you just mentioned? Uh, what are the channels um, maybe from previous investments you've seen working best when mixed with TV and um it, is this part of um, some kind of like strategy, I guess, of partnering up with other funds or even VCs that back consumer businesses in terms of making even that cash work harder? Yeah, so I think um, look other above the line channels, so kind of you know radio and out of home are two really really key ones where we've definitely seen um, when you invest in TV, kind of you know there's a really strong amplification benefit there, um, and you know we, we we are very collaborative, so you know, obviously you know. Um, JC Deco have their own kind of nurture program and we we look at kind of um collaborating with them. Um but but also I think kind of the the other main benefit is around kind of your your indirect costs as well. Um so particularly as you're driving kind of organic brand search without having to kind of then bid on kind of paid search terms. That's I think a really important um benefit that TV can have um and one that startups should be kind of factoring in when they're thinking about the the overall ROI of TV. That's you know, it's it, it's yeah, it's definitely a really important kind of part of what TV will drive beyond just the the original the initial kind of halo benefit and just kind of um, the yeah the the kind of the short term uh, multiplier effect. We we often make the case, Sheena, that um, media capital, media for equity investments um, do help founders perhaps preserve that cash that could otherwise spend on covering other operational costs, perhaps, but still. Um, you know, you, you, that company before making a media for equity investment has to have significant runway. There are other costs, obviously, that might come later on. And um, TV, obviously, could be just one channel in the mix. They might be spending on digital and so on. Um, how, I mean, clearly there's, um, we, we started the year in the VC market. Um, personally, from what I've seen from other founders that I work with, it's quite slow at deploying capital. I think a lot yeah. of VCs are just, just kind of waiting right now. And then when we look more into late, late stage companies, but if we zoom into the consumer business um, space as well, um, things actually look even slower. Um, how does the, the, the growth stage VC market right now impact your investment decisions? And what are some of the trends that, that you've seen? Yeah, so look, for, for us, kind of cash runway is key. Um, you know, we want to be investing in businesses where they have sufficient sufficient cash runway to to kind of kind of not just over the, the period in which kind of the media is being deployed. And, and part of that is also, as I say, we we like to invest in businesses where TV is part of a, a broader omni-channel mix. And so if they've got if they've got cash to allocate to other um kind of marketing channels, then that's that's even better. Um but equally we also look to kind of invest alongside uh, a kind of a VC partner. So we we don't need rounds. We very much piggyback off um, a VC that we, you know, we co-invest alongside who is very much the one leading the round, kind of setting the valuation, kind of doing the, the lion's share of the, the diligence. And so um, that that for us is kind of a really important part of kind of how how we look to kind of invest in, and make media equity investments and um and yes i mean at the moment kind of the, the market is naturally kind of challenging given where given where kind of you know it, it's a much tougher capital market and, and most vcs are are to be honest kind of retrenching away from consumer investing and, and instead going back to kind of the you know the traditional heartlands of, of b2b and SaaS and um you know those types of businesses um but having said that you know there are still um, a number of funds that are kind of active in the space um, just you know I think the, the model has shifted to rather than just you know funding businesses um, out, 
I think, you know, somewhat kind of lofty valuations as, as probably we've seen in, in the past years. Um, there's a relentless focus on kind of unit economics, um, profitability. You know, it's no, it's no longer kind of just revenue or user growth for the sake of growth. It's, it's a very different type of business. And, and I think founders are also shifting their, their focus and how they're kind of running, running their companies to, to account for that. Um, but having said that, I think, you know, the flip side to that is I think there's a real opportunity for the, the media equity space at the moment, because I think you know, even before the current market conditions, I think there's always been probably a lack of you know, specialist consumer funds in, in this space and specifically ones that really understand what it takes to successfully drive brand building and, and kind of con- consumer marketing. Um, so, you know, that coupled with now kind of the lack of um, investment, you know, venture investment in in the, in, the, in the market for consumer businesses, I'd say that that's a real opportunity for, for mutual equity players to, to really kind of come in and, and fill that funding gap. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that funding gap is, is something that we see across not just the UK, but Europe as well. From other conversations I've had, you can tell me as well if you, if you feel the same, but um, there's been a much higher, I think, um, uptake on media for equity deals in the last few months and founders just being more receptive Previously, perhaps because they, you know, they would prefer cash. However, if you think about it, you you go about raising cash. That if you if that half percent of them would go into your marketing spend, then I think it's a bit questionable. Then why don't you actually consider doing a media for deal alongside your um, your normal VC round? So. Um, have you seen yeah, in the last few months is. expect that to pick up as well? Yeah, I think there's a just a, a lot more founder appetite for for doing. Uh, for doing media for equity deals um, and also just I think an understanding that from a capital efficiency point of view you know that there's real benefit you know economic benefit to, to doing a media for equity deal rather than just you know allocating kind of existing cash for for that kind of marketing mix and so I think both both in terms of just the the broader kind of founder education around that piece but also then the appetite to do these types of deals given the the lack of alternative funding models um i think the two have had a really strong reinforcing effect particularly over the last kind of you know six to twelve months and i mean a lot of the media for equity funds and i suppose itv adventures um uh, does it too um you basically come in in that round as any other investor right so you participate in the round at the, the same terms same company valuation i know it's usually a convertible loan so it's either you know, set at the at the future valuation based on a, on the date, or potentially looking back. Oh, yeah, at- we'll, we'll we'll do either. We'll it'll either be a convertible yeah. loan, or if it's if there is a, a you know an existing fundraising happening where it's a price round, then we'll we'll subscribe at that same that same price as part of the same price. price. Yeah. So, what why should a venture capital investor then um, you know look at clo- working closely with the media for equity fund, for example, like ITV Adventures? Um, yeah, good good question and one I've had to answer many times as we look to kind of build out our, our kind of co-investor base. Um, so I think there's, there's a number of reasons. Um, the, the first is around kind of, as I say, kind of the, you know, we offer highly favourable kind of, you know, media terms. Um, and so there is, you know, from the startup's perspective, there's a real argument around capital efficiency and kind of the, the economic value that you get doing doing a media equity deal um, and then beyond that there is also then kind of the strategic value that we bring as you know as a co-investor and, and that is very very focused around our ability and understanding and experience in you know mass market brand building um, and you know we think as an owned kind of media um, fund we know our inventory better than than anybody else will um, and we you know we plan it like a shareholder rather than a media owner um, and there is, you know, in terms of all the kind of ancillary benefits that that we talked about earlier, um, from the creative to the media planning to the measurement, um, there is a whole host of other kind of, you know, strategic value add that we bring beyond just the, the media itself. And so from a holistic perspective, if, if, you know, if you're an investor in a business that is, you know, a consumer, a DTC business where they need to build a brand, they need to kind of really kind of, you know, drive brand awareness and, and, and acquire customers with a view to kind of growing and scaling and, and ultimately exiting. Um, TV is going to, at some stage, form a really important part of your, your marketing mix. And um, so we think kind of as a partner, we're really well placed to help that business, you know, maximum success um, versus any other 
any other option. So, so that's where we see kind of our, our value add coming, kind of what we can offer. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm pleased to say that, you know, we, we have a, a large number of kind of co-investors that have, have now kind of seen the, the value that we, we, we bought obviously we're still a, we're an early stage fund we've only been going for a couple of years so there's still lots more to, to prove out um but yeah more and more kind of our deal flow is coming from from vcs ones that we've you know been on cap tables with previously and they've, they've seen kind of you know the, the real life evidence of of how our investment can really help drive you know everything from kind of the unit economics um you know cacs coming down um brand awareness growing um, through to yeah, just the the wider halo effect that the TV can have, um, and I think once once that's happened, then there's a snowball effect in terms of they bring you into more and more deals, and um, and yeah, you, you develop those kind of co investor relationships. And, and I guess there's uh, there's scope with uh, follow on investments as well with ITV Adventures. I know yes. we talked about investment thesis, but um, do you do you, you want to share more on that? I know the fund. Uh, relatively the size 50 million pounds you have probably a set of investments that you want to do in a year but is is part of that potentially allocated to follow on investments as well yes yeah definitely so we very much see the media for equity investments that we make as as a long-term partnership and from our perspective you know we we want to be part of the 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 full funding life cycle of a startup's journey so yes follow-on investments is a a really important part of what we've done um so we followed on in our investments into into what three words um into feel into spoke um the majority of invest i mean obviously we've, we've done six investments to date so um you know to say the majority of those have been follow on is 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 easy to do when you're an early stage fund but that that very much is part of the investment thesis in that you know we want to be the, the whole model is we'll, we'll we'll do an initial kind of tranche of media um prove to the startup that actually itvs can genuinely be a really important ac- acquisitions channel brand building channel scaling channel um and then they'll want to double down on that and and you know we're very much up for being part of the riders as they continue to grow so that's yeah, yeah that's really important to us I mean, six, six investments, Sheena, I think it's a very healthy number considering the fund has been around for about 18 months. And I know what it was. True. <laughs> and the fact that he's doing a follow on investment. Um, I mean, this is brilliant. And obviously, Phil as well. Um, what about this year? How many do you have a set target in mind? And what uh, on that note as well, what kind of sectors or technologies or trends um, excite you most? Right now. Yes, I think um, I'm hopeful that we will be very, very active this year. Um, we, I mean, if we could do, yeah, if we could kind of double the size of the portfolio this year, that would be, that would be kind of amazing. Um, and I think given, you know, everything we talked about in terms of where the market is at the moment, I think the market is ripe to to do, to do more deals. So, um, yeah, obviously we, we announced our first deal in, in Resi yesterday. Um, I'm hoping we'll be announcing another one um, very soon, kind of later this month. Um, and we've got a really, really strong deal pipeline um, across everything from um, kind of, you know, pure kind of e-commerce businesses through to um, pet care, uh, femtech, uh, fintech, um, kind of, you know, health and beauty, personal care. Um, those are just some, yeah, some of the sectors that we're, we're looking at at the moment. Um, but as I say, a- able to take a pretty broad approach as long as, yeah, as long as the fundamentals are in place um, and it's a fundamentally a mass market kind of consumer proposition, we'll, we're, we're open to taking a look. As, as we are, we'll be wrapping up soon, I'm, I'm curious about um, where do you see this whole model going, um, not only in 2023, but perhaps in the years to come? Any any biggest, like, or what, what could be the biggest opportunities in the space, um, both from maybe fund structures as well as channels? Do you see potentially other players coming into the space? Um What's your yeah, view on yeah, that? I think look, I think the future is really bright for for media capital. Um, I think specifically this year, I think will be a, a really strong year. Um, not just in terms of you know, I think it's established funds that are already in the market, as I say, will will probably be really active. Um, ITV Adventures for for sure will be, but I'm sure kind of many other players will be able to take advantage of just 
the large number of interesting deals that that we had and, and aren't being kind of necessarily funded um, and be able to get into businesses at you know decent valuations and and therefore kind of when they come to exit hopefully see kind of really strong returns from from the businesses they've been investing in kind of in, in this particular market um, so yeah I think kind of from a capital deployment perspective but also caliber of company and and therefore quality of returns I think there'll be some really interesting um, deals to be done by existing players that are already kind of in the market and, and well established. Um, but equally, I think there will also probably be, uh, you know, a rising number of emerging funds kind of coming in, coming into the market um, internationally, I think, across across the board. Uh, and that's partly, I think, because of the kind of the success that media owned and independent funds are, are having. Um, I think as that awareness builds and and also kind of, you know, the sharing of the learnings and successes and kind of what it takes to to, to start and launch and scale a, and, you know, a successful media fund. Um, as that knowledge becomes more kind of, you know, uh, strongly aware, then I think there will just be a proliferation of, of more funds entering this space. So, yeah, I think the, the wider ecosystem is only going to grow um, and, and hopefully kind of, you know, I think we're generally quite um quite open about you know what drives success and, and kind of how to make it work so i'm hoping that kind of yeah at least some of the, the advice i've shared on on today but also just more broadly will help other kind of emerging fund managers to to think about kind of how they should set up their own funds and how to structure it and, and kind of how to, to win in in markets now absolutely and for investors as well um and I, but i do have to ask on on that note, um, one of in the previous episode we um, we talked about this um, independent media for equity fund model, um, as I like to call it, where basically it's a it's a pool of media inventory from different partners coming together and pretty much uh, trusting a fund manager to to strike those media for equity deals. Um, we haven't seen this model in the UK just yet. Um, why do you think that is? And do you think a, a model like that would actually have success um, in, in, in this market with essentially quite a lot of funds, actually, um, however, owned by media companies, um, being very well established and, uh, you know, have been running for quite a few years now? Yeah, it's, um, it's a good question. And I mean, I think... I think probably the the main challenge with the the UK market specifically is is because we are quite a mature ecosystem of um, you know established you know well, well established and successful media owned funds. I think it's it's a very different proposition to to get each of those media owners to relinquish the the autonomy and the control um, that they have through kind of having. Op- clearly kind of you know started their own funds but also kind of grown them and scaled them to, to, to I'd say probably high high degree of success rate um to kind of m- move away from that and kind of relinquish all of that to to a you know external kind of um fund manager um as well as obviously kind of all the complexity that you have to cut through in terms of kind of uh, finding a, a proposition and a structure that works for every single one of those media owners and the fact that they will all have different requirements and objectives and success criteria um i think that's probably what's what's going to be the the, the the probably the main reason why it hasn't happened and then probably will be quite challenging in the future as opposed to say a, a country where it's a much more nascent market there haven't there aren't many media um owners that already have their funds and therefore the barriers to to entry for them are, are pretty low compared to the uk market where it would be the first time that they're kind of making their media available um, and actually having someone external and independent to, to do all the hard work for them is is a is a blessing <laughs> rather than a curse. Whereas I think the UK market is somewhat nuanced in in just the degree of maturity that the the current ecosystem has. No, I completely agree, and I think getting that structure right, as you said, um, and you, you know that very well. I think this is the the highest um, the highest challenge that I've seen recently. Um, but also equally, I think the upsides could be um, quite tremendous when we think about. At the end of the day, it's just portfolio diversification, isn't it? And having I guess the flexibility of investing with other complementary channels, um, which equally translates into a higher flexibility for the startups, probably in terms of choosing um, to have a bouquet of mix of channels, outdoor TV. Yeah, no, I mean, never never say never. Um, But yeah, I do think kind of it's probably a 
the UK market is probably the toughest one to to crack out of, out of all the possible markets, for sure. True, <laughs> absolutely. Thanks so much, Sheena. This was uh, extremely helpful, and um, I no, look you. forward to seeing you basically next Thursday, right? At yes. the event. Yeah, look forward to it. I didn't realize it's actually a week from now. Time time flies. Um, where we'll be joined by what three words? Uh, I know it was ITV's first investment. Uh, we have right. Smeal, we have Nico from General Media Pool and Brand Capital. Um, and we will talk more about other real life examples of um, of both the investing as well as raising media capital. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Me too. Thanks so much again for joining. Um, and I will see you next week. Awesome. Thanks, Diana. Really nice to chat. As always, I really appreciate your support. You can find a full video episode on YouTube on the Media for Growth channel, or you can listen to it on Spotify, Google or Apple Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the Media for Growth newsletter to get all the insights from our latest shows, including the full interview script. See you next time.